Hi all, I'm Jim Collinson, user experience designer here at MadeSafe. We're of course building the Safe Network, which on top of being the world's first decentralized autonomous network, has the amazing ability to put you in sole control over your own personal data. Safe Network apps that you use are different to what you'll currently experience. When you install or use one, you're not handing over your data to a business or third party. There's no eyeballs peeking at your information. It's you alone using an app to access and manipulate your own data as you see fit. But you're still totally in charge of how all this works. And there are times where you may want more specific control, like when you're about to use an app to share or publish some data, or when you need to use some new software to send a payment as an example. So how do you stay informed and in control of all of that? Well, that's the user experience we're designing and building at the moment. And we thought you'd like to see how it's shaping up so far. So let me take you on a little tour of our progress. So let's take a look at what we're building to allow users to exert control over access to their own data. At the heart of the user experience is what you can think of as a permissions or access manifest. That's a digestible, user-readable, one-sheet representation of the permissions an app has, or perhaps another user has over a given set of data. It's likely that they won't be referred to as a manifest to the end user, but it's a useful metaphor for us right now to describe this UI device and its application. Like a flight manifest used in aviation uh, to detail the cargo, the passengers, and the flight plan of an aircraft as a requirement before it can take off, a permissions manifest is required before an app can be used to access a given set of data. So here's a little breakdown of the anatomy of a manifest. The permissions manifest is a screen which describes what level of access an app or in future a safe ID has to a given set of data. From this screen, these permissions can be removed or added to or have rules applied to them. So at the top here, this row here, we have a chip which specifies what app this manifest is granting permissions to. And the row below, this chip specifies what data the manifest is granting permissions for. So this could be an individual file as shown here, or it could be a folder or a label, which is a category of data or a wallet. And when creating a new manifest, the UI might also allow multiple chips to be entered here for various files and folders, um, which would then be split down into individual manifests once the edit is saved. But for the time being, in this example, we're just seeing a manifest for one individual file. This area here is where the applied permissions are shown. Green indicating current permissions, but gray may also be used when permissions are pending. For example, when they've been added but not yet saved onto this manifest, or if they're included in a request that has yet to be approved uh, by the user. At the bottom here, we have a, a sheet which is a control which allows permissions to be added to this manifest. So only available and applicable permissions are shown here and can be selected. Tapping one of them or tapping anywhere in the sheet uh, puts you into edit mode. Um, when expanded, you can also see a row of rules which could be added to each um, permission, which I'll come on to in a little bit, but it defaults to always. But in this case, for I want to allow uh, type dart to be used to share this lions.jpg file and maybe I want to be asked every time before that happens so I can select ask every time and add that permission and you can see it's pending here waiting for me to save it and now it's applied so type dart I can now use to share this image should I want to but I will be prompted every time before that happens navigating to an individual file with the safe network app allows a user to see which apps and which other people have current access to this file. So ignoring the default uh, option at the top here, this list item at the top, we can see below it um, which apps and other users have current access to this file with a short summary of each permissions they have. Tapping any of these rows will open the manifest in question. And this list is ordered by the most recently created or edited manifest and only those which have current access are shown in the initial view. The default option at the top, this manifest shows and details 
the access to any new app will have to this file by default. That's a way for a user to tighten up access to the individual files if they're important to them, or perhaps loosen things up for less friction and fewer interruptions for data, which is less sensitive or demands easier and more frequent access. These defaults can be set um, either individually for a file or a folder or a label, or they can be set at an account level too, but we'll come back to that a little bit later on. We've also got a floating action button you can see here. This could allow a user to create a manifest for a specific app or for a person without a request coming in or ahead of it being required. And that would be particularly useful for users that have these default permissions locked down quite tightly. It may end up being a little bit redundant though as most permissions will be granted through requests or by defaults. I've also got a filter control here, which could be used to sort these. And in particular, I could use it to show apps that have had um, all their permissions set to never. They've been blocked. Blocked apps are those that do still have an active manifest technically, but have no current access to the file. And we've also got an overflow menu at the top here, which um, allows the file to have all its permissions quickly revoked, requiring them to be re-requested or for it to be locked, having all permissions set to never, all apps uh, and all access blocked. There is a parallel to the individual file screen, which is viewing the access that an app has to your data via the app screen. The default permissions at the top here show the manifest which control access this app has to any data with its own label, that its own data that has been created via the app itself, or all existing and future data, and of course, access to SafeCoin as well. The exceptions shown below are where a user has specified different levels of access than the defaults for individual files or folders or labels. And this floating action button here again allows a user to create these exceptions from this screen. But all exceptions here are viewable on this screen, even if they've been created via other screens, such as the file view or by setting exceptions at an account level, um, as I'll come on to in just a second. So here we have an account setting screen. These are primarily related to the kind of access new apps have to data and when and how interventions are made in the user's flow relating to that. So here we have links through to individual manifests, um, which are at an account level, and this allows a user to customize their experience depending on their tolerance for interruptions or how much control they want, want over certain data or actions. For example, they may be happy to allow a new app to be used to create data, but they want to double check its access before it's able to say, publish a photo. Altering any of these manifests here does not have an effect on permissions already granted to existing apps. It's just for new apps. So tapping on any of these cards here, for example, this one, it will re re reveal the manifest that gives new apps these permissions and I can customize them from here, of course. In this example, we're granting new apps permission to create, view, and edit data that has that app's own label, a way of ring fencing permissions and ring fencing data just for that individual app and enabling a user to have potentially slightly more open access to individual app data, but uh, more lockdown access that that app has to wider data. So in this case here, I have easy access to create and view and edit app data. That's always available. But when I'm using a new app to share or publish data, I have to check the first time to share. And every time a new app uh, is used to publish data, I will be asked and I have to confirm each time. We've also got um, a space at the bottom of this manifest here to include provision for additional metadata to allow more context, more help um, to, the, to the user to help them in, make an informed decision here. That's useful at an account level here when I'm setting these global permissions, but also 
when uh, permission requests come in, this will be a, a handy place to, to allow more context. Users can also add exceptions to these defaults for new apps too, using the same manifest flow. So here, I can select which data we want to create an exception for. And here we have a first sort of use of labels here, a way to categorize data regardless of where it's located in the account. So for example, I might want to create an exception over the use of images, what new apps can do with even certain images or all images within my account. So I could select all images as a category as a whole and add an exception for those it creates a manifest for me, which I can then customize. And in this case, I might want to change the ability for new apps to edit images. Maybe I want them to never be able to edit images. So there's an exception which I can save. And now it's created here. So this is reflected on the account setting screen. And of course, on individual image screens, I will see the defaults for, uh, for new apps will be set to edit never. So now we're gonna come on to talk about permissions requests. So broadly, there are three types of permission requests a user may be presented with. Just-in-time authorization, just-in-time consent, and then upfront authorization. So we're gonna take a look at each. So just-in-time authorization is a common type of request a user might come across. An app doesn't have permission for a specific set of data or a file, and so the user needs to authorize it at the time it's required and requested by an app. It's also an opportunity for the user to have an overview of the other permissions that an app already has for the data in question. So typically they would see something like a notification um, or be otherwise prompted within the app to take an action, the, the user will be presented with a permission request such as this. It takes the format of a manifest and here you can see that TypeDart already has permission to view lions.jpg, but it is requesting and requiring edit and share permissions to be able to open and attach this image to a message. So this is effectively a draft request that can be edited. I can get in about it here and change things I like or don't like, um, or I can accept it. And in this case, it's a two part thing. So I accept this part of the manifest relating to this lines.jpg. I'm happy with that. But then there's another part to it, which is safe coin. So type dart at the same time is requesting permission to view the balance of my wallet to be able to show this balance in the app. So this again is where this metadata will come in useful, helps keep the user informed about what they might be granting this for, or for them to decide to perhaps, perhaps deny it or apply rules to it. In this case, it's all cool, I'm gonna accept it. And we can see that type Dart has been given these permissions. Now the next type of request is just-in-time consent. This is a useful type of request because it allows a use to consent to actions requiring permissions at the time they are about to happen. This type of request is likely to be used most often with permissions such as share and publish or when sending payments. So let me show you this. So if a manifest has a permission to set to, for example, ask every time or ask the first time they will be shown a just-in-time consent. So here we have an example of a just-in-time consent dialogue where the safe browser is required to ask every time for consent to publish. It's useful because I can also choose other options from a dropdown here to amend this rule for future requests too, if the user chooses it, or they're happy to allow this this time, I can allow it here. And the third part to this is upfront authorization. An upfront, upfront authorization request is presented to a user when the app is first installed or opened. So all permissions it will be granted can be verified ahead of time before they're being required or requested by the app. So the eagle-eyed among you will have seen this on the account setting screen that I've highlighted here. Um, and this is where upfront authorization can be turned on or off. Upfront authorization doesn't necessarily give users more security 
or more control, but it's an alternative mode of use that some have been kind of become accustomed to and expect. Uh, so this is how I can turn it on here. So when it is on, users will be prompted via a notification and with, via the Safe Network app to check and authorize permissions the first time an app is used. So here we have a permission request. So no permissions are granted by default, but a draft and pending manifest is created that can then be accepted, rejected, or amended. It would typically be a three-part request for all data, the individual apps own label data, or and also for Safecoin. But here I've only got two shown here just for, for brevity. So all data, and here's what um, access will be granted to Safecoin here. So that's upfront authorization. So I thought I'd also give you a rundown of the different types of rules that can be applied to permissions when you're adding them to a manifest. Uh, shown in this row here. The default is always, and as the name suggests, this will give the app the permission perpetually. It can of course be changed at any point in the future by editing it here in the manifest, but it means that this app can use this permission without any further intervention required. The next one is ask every time. And when this option is selected, the user will be shown a just-in-time permission request screen each time the app needs to use the data in question at the point of use. Check first time is the same as ask every time, but it only shows the just-in-time request once for the given data, after which the permission reverts to always. Until I log out, we'll grant a permission until the user logs out of the client which was used to set it. And after logout, the permission will then be uh, undefined or will need to be requested again. Adding a duration allows a user to apply a specific time limit, for example, until tomorrow or for one week, after which it will revert to not having a permission and require a request again. And never is different from not having a permission or an undefined or null permission. It's more akin to blocking. So an app will be denied the permission, but the user won't be given a request by the Safe Network app. An alternative to um, never, you might think of it like blocking or locking the permission. There we go. That's the progress so far on the user experience of data permissions. We'd love to hear your thoughts either in the YouTube comments or over on the forum at safenetforum.org.